Intel just announced they'll be launching their 11th gen Rocket Lake S processors in the first quarter of next year, but will they be fast enough to beat AMD's new Ryzen 5000 series processors? Let's find out. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So during AMD's Zen 3 launch event, they decided to go ahead and show off their new 12-core 5900X processor in a variety of games, and in one of their slides they decided to go ahead and show it versus the Intel i9-10900K, and in that slide you can see that they're actually on average 7% faster in gaming now, and of course they have more cores, so they absolutely destroy them in multi-threading performance. But just a couple of days before this event, Intel decided to officially announce that they'll be launching their 11th gen Rocket Lake S desktop processors in the first quarter of next year, and that got me thinking, is Intel going to be able to take back their gaming crown by a significant margin, and should you even wait? And in order to figure that out, well first we need to know what the specs of these processors are, and while nothing is actually official right now, we do have a whole lot of leaked information on the specs of these upcoming Rocket Lake desktop processors, and there will be links in the description below for all this leaked information I'm about to talk about, but in any case, let's go ahead and take a look at these specs of what we think we know so far. So apparently it's going to be produced on the Intel 14 nanometer plus 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 process and it'll have up to eight cores and 16 threads which is actually a little bit disappointing because the current i9 10900k actually has up to 10 cores so it's a little bit bizarre that it's only going to have eight cores and i know some of you might be thinking no there's no way that could be true but i've heard from a lot of different sources that apparently that is going to be the case and you know we don't know for sure yet but it does actually sound legitimate to me so far and the reason why that might be happening is because they're going to be switching to a new architecture and this architecture makes the cores much wider or much larger Larger, they're able to do more work and so on the aging 14 nanometer process unfortunately that means that they just can't strap as many cores on there without making the power draw just way way higher so you know AMD has a significant advantage right now with their TSMC 7 nanometer process that they're developing stuff on they have the uh, chiplet architecture that allows them to make two eight cores and put them on the same uh, substrate I believe and unfortunately for Intel with their monolithic design they can't really just take two different eight cores and put them together yet they don't have that design ready yet I'm sure at some point they probably will switch to that type of a design but we'll have to wait and see but again as of right now it seems like with this new architecture they're just going to have to stick to only eight cores but you know what if it's faster in gaming I think for a lot of people that's going to matter a lot more than the amount of cores that you can get now taking a look at the clock speeds here apparently it's only going to hit up to five gigahertz instead of the 5.3 gigahertz that you see on the 10900k right now and you know this isn't official yet so of course it could end up getting up to say 5.1 or 5.2 gigahertz when it's all said and done but the reason why once again that it's probably going to have a slight reduction in this area just like how they're going to have a reduction in the core count is because once again they're moving to a wider core design which means that unfortunately these cores probably just won't be able to get quite as fast as the cores that they're replacing but they'll be able to do way more in the same amount of clock so even though it's going to only be hitting probably five gigahertz when they launch you'll be able to get way more done with that five gigahertz than you'd be able to get done with the five gigahertz on the current i9 10900k or at least the uh, equivalent eight core that it would be competing against now unfortunately that is a six percent reduction so that is going to hurt the overall lift that they're going to get from moving to this wider design but i think overall the wider design is going to be a much better move for intel now these are going to be made on the apparently a backported version of the Willow Cove architecture which that was originally designed for 10 nanometer mobile parts and is being backported to 14 nanometers so that they can use it on the desktop because unfortunately the desktop versions of the 10 nanometer chips just aren't quite ready for prime time yet and this will apparently have somewhere between a 10 to 25 percent IPC jump which you know that's a pretty huge swing so you know let's be pretty generous here and say that it's about an 18 percent uplift overall I think that's probably roughly where it's going to land which is actually really impressive so despite the fact that you're moving down and the amount of cores that you're getting and you're going to get probably slightly less clocks out of these CPUs, they're going to be able to get way more done with that 18% IPC lift. So these are going to be much, much faster cores. And importantly here, they're going to have PCIe 4.0 support finally. And of course, it's going to support DDR4 memory. They're not quite ready for DDR5 yet, but that will be coming within next architectures from both Intel and AMD supposedly. Now with all that information, we can finally figure out how much faster Rocket Lake is going to be and whether or not it's actually going to beat AMD's new Ryzen 5000 series processors. So if we go ahead and we take that 18% IPC lift that I just talked about, and then we take the 6% reduction in clock speeds that we're going to get. Well, that gives you an overall, you know, CPU that's going to be around 12% faster per core, which, of course, if AMD's only winning by about 7% right now, well, then that means that this processor should be roughly 5% faster than the 
5900X it'll be uh, compared to. Now, 5% isn't a whole lot, but you know what? AMD isn't winning by a whole lot right now either, and some people who are into like professional gaming, every single percentage matters. So for those people, they probably will end up buying these new processors despite the fact that they have less cores because, again, it's going to take back the gaming crown, or at least I very much expect it to because if they don't do that, if they somehow bring these new processors out and they still don't beat AMD, I would be very, very shocked. So now that we know what the specs and the performance are likely to be, now we can finally answer the question, should you wait for these new processors? And I think this is kind of one of those questions where you can say, well, yes and no, because uh, the reasons why you probably wouldn't want to wait is for the absolute performance. Because like I stated, yes, AMD or Intel will be probably getting their gaming crown back by a small margin. But again, we're talking about a really small margin here. And I think that overall, if you were someone who had a budget in mind at least, and you're just trying to get a really good deal on a processor, you're, probably your best bet at this point would probably be to go out and get a 6 or 8 core processor in the 3000 series from AMD right now. Because those processors are actually really, really cheap. I think typically you can get like a 3700X 8-core processor from AMD for around $300, which for that price is really, really good. And you can slap that thing on a B450 or X570 motherboard. And I know that the X570 boards and the B550 boards from AMD are going to have support for the Ryzen 5000 series processors on day one. So at any point, if you feel like that old processor needs an upgrade, then you can go ahead and drop those in. And, you know, it just seems like a really budget-friendly way to approach things. So overall... I think that it's probably not worth waiting, but there are some reasons to wait, and I think the biggest reason is that it's just going to force prices to come down from both camps. So Intel's had very fierce competition from AMD over the last couple of years, and I think that's only been escalated by the fact that these Ryzen 5000 series processors have, for the first time in I think like over 10 years, finally taken the gaming crown back from Intel. And so I think that's going to force Intel to come out here and give you probably the best prices that they've ever given before, and of course that's going to force AMD to respond by reducing the their prices because since they do hold the gaming lead right now they actually upped their prices and so I think whether or not you want an Intel chip or an AMD chip if you do wait for Intel to release their processors the whole pricing from both companies is probably going to be the best that it's ever going to be because of course the competition is going to be very very fierce and it's going to force them both to be very very aggressive but hey that's just what I think what do you think about Intel's 11th gen processors do you think that they'll be able to beat AMD and do you think that it even matters I'd love to see what you have to say in the comments below and of course I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, Nvidia and Intel drop prices. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.